negotiating with a major entertainment company about holding a live event in Hawaii later this year. Likely built around the Von Ericks who live there. Are, are they part of are they part of the blood family? They are not. They're not. Oh. They are not. That'd be fun. But they like Hawaii. <laughs> this was something that was originally planned to be MLW's first pay per view last year, but then when it didn't come together, Chicago became the first pay per view city. Whoop whoop. Woohoo. I think Chicago should, should probably cool. be your first choice because I'm pretty sure most entertainment isn't doesn't hit very well in Hawaii. I was just watching Joe Rogan. Uh, he had Bill Maher on, and Bill Maher invited him to do his annual Chris or New Year's show in in Hawaii. And Joe was talking about how comedy is pretty dead over there. I'm sure, but I'm pretty sure not only is wrestling huge there, but the Von Ericks are huge there. I think you'd get. I think between Islanders that live there. And then people who are vacationing, I bet you'd get a sellout oh, easily there. Oh, that would be there. such a fun vacation to go to Hawaii and watch some good ass wrestling. Yeah, I think it would. It, I think it would easily and will easily be a sellout. Um, Chicago was great. Obviously, AEW has proven Chicago is a huge independent or alternative. I guess you could say a wrestling city mm. for sure. Um, but. I think Chicago, or I think uh, I think the story is, is awesome. So and and with Major League Wrestling being a smaller, they're not going to run a huge venue there. Let's be honest, right. they're not yeah. running, they're not running Spam anything even as big as Madison Square Garden. Yeah, oh, that'd be awesome. Why not? You know, but I, I think it'd be perfect for them. I think it would tell a great story. Obviously, in pro wrestling, the islands have have always been a hot spot. Whether it's Samoa, whether it is um, Hawaii, whether it is uh, Puerto Rico, a- any of those, they do huge. So I think it's great. I can't wait for it. I would love to go there, but I'm not going to be able to. But I could. I could imagine they're going to have a sellout. I don't think they'll have a problem selling that out at all. Yeah. One person who has a problem selling out because uh, it's just not available. Impact Wrestling confirmed their Twitch TV account pasty was suspended. Oh no! This I due to why ex- that was this due to explicit content. It appears the content in question was all Robbie V. Rob Van Dam doing a promo featuring an extremely scantily clad Katie Forbes, his girlfriend, and her girlfriend, all in bed. With whipped cream, with Rob Van Dam, it was uh, as Pasty and I have already said. It was very, very WCW WWE ish. Not what we need to see, probably in 2020. I mean, not what I want to no, see. No, I expect Rob Van Dam's been around for so long. I just expect so much more out of him. But I guess the age group, like, like he's he's portraying the role of like a top rock star, like where you would expect Chris Jericho well, to be when he's on tour. Let me put it this way, Pasty. As a father of a 13 year old, I know that my 13 year old has watched hardcore porn on his phone. So we no longer need to see softcore implied porn on our wrestling shows. Yeah. Give us wrestling and good storylines, and then when we want to see porn, we'll go to fucking Pornhub.com and stream that shit and jerk right. off. Okay? And if it was on uh, Pornhub, honestly, I'm sure it would have got a lot of hits. Uh, for sure. So that's, that's what it is. I've been thinking that since the story broke. I was like, oh, shit, he should have taken it to the right website, and he'd have been fine. So, but to get back to the story, we have heard that the I company is working towards getting the suspension lifted, <laughs> and Twitch has an existing deal, has had an existing deal with Impact for an ongoing channel featuring a mix of live and streaming content from Impact's video library. So I'm sure it's going to shortly get uh, fixed and brought back up, but they're off for now. They're suspended. Yep. No more sex parties for you, Robbie. Well, he still gets them. He just doesn't get to air them on Twitch TV. (laughs) And with the temporary hole, Impact is left in our minimal choices in wrestling on TV today. Oh, very few. I I can't even find wrestling. 
man. I, I turned on the WWE network, network and I'm like, where's the wrestling? <laughs> Two companies are already making television deals for us to talk about in the Sentinel today. Woo! First, according to news broken by Deadline Hollywood Major League News Wrestling. What? Oh, okay. First broken by Deadline Hollywood, comma, Major League Wrestling has signed on with ICM Partners and is looking to broker new TV and streaming deals for the promotion. ICM is a talent agency with offices in Los Angeles, New York, Washington, and London, they represent show one runners in the TV and film industry. MLW's TV rights became available this spring. The promotion is touting a 43% growth in total viewers from 2018 to 2019 while on BN Sports, which is huge in the television and wrestling industry. ICM Partners will also represent MLW with the launch of MLW Studios. Hopefully it's better than WWE Studios. A multi-platform media studio offering the slate of original scripted and non-scripted programming, according to an MLW press release. Well, this is great for MLW. I'm super happy for them. Yes, thank God, because they don't already have something on TV. Right. And they could just fucking... Well, they do have something on TV. Shut up. (laughs) They're on BN Sports every week. Weekly. But they could definitely use uh, everybody. Could you? If I'm going to look at every wrestling promotion out there right now, I want MLW to expand. Yeah. Just greedily, because I love MLW. That's my favorite right now. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with them growing, and this is this is huge. It is. And them getting a 43 percent growth in viewers from 2018 to 2019, considering how saturated the market is now. That means the word's getting out there. That's oh, yeah. gargantuan. That's almost a 50% increase. What are you talking about? I think so, it's because we've been touted more than anybody. Mm-hmm. Very happy to hear that, Pasty. But something else that's huge news that I'm super happy to hear about is that uh, it was reported Wednesday... AEW and Warner Media have announced that their deal for AEW Dynamite on TNT has now been extended. All right! The new deal is for four years and $175 million. That is just under $45 million per year. Although TNT will no longer be covering production costs, so that now falls in AEW's lap. So some of that money they're getting is now going to have to go towards production. Still, quite, quite, quite a good leap. Uh, by all estimations, they're going to be profitable next year. For a company to be profitable in their second year, especially a company as huge as this, that is very seldom heard of. That's yes. huge. Yes. So... Way to fucking go. Also, it feels really good, especially when people are posting the pictures of the uh, the hard cam side of the arena and everything. Well, you know what? It's not tickets. all about uh, it's not all about ticket sales. Just because right. people aren't coming to see you live doesn't mean people aren't tuning in, and doesn't mean that investors aren't uh, trying to sell products on your show. Also, TNT has the first option for renewal in 2024, which means that AEW can't go and shop around to other companies to try to boost up TNT's um, price. If TNT wants to renew them next year, AEW has to take that offer. So, Well, I can't see what uh, any other broadcasting network you'd want to go to that hasn't already been tainted by WWE. You know right. What I mean? It was also announced that two sides have agreed on a new AEW series, Pasty, to premiere at a later date. And it looks like the second series will be AEW Dark, which currently airs Tuesdays on YouTube, but will be coming to TNT with a few added changes. In fact, the rap's Tony Maglio spoke with Turner President Kevin Riley at the Television Critics Association press event on Wednesday and Riley reviews the new revealed the news there. He said Dark will air weekly on TNT, but it won't air 52 weeks a year, and that's likely due to uh, other programming on TNT. 
They've always been known to do that even back in uh, WCW days. Mm -hmm. Riley elaborated on the plan to add changes to AEW Dark before bringing it to cable TV, saying, quote, We're going to embellish AEW Dark and put some additional material, kind of behind the scenes, kind of docu-follow stuff, if you will, about the athletes and the stories. Riley later told Variety that the new and improved AEW Dark will not air on Monday nights against WWE Raw, saying, We just figured let's bring it onto the network and make it a place where you truly plant up where you truly plant up and coming talent. I think we'll start doing more packages there and filming some behind the scenes stuff. Not for the matches that night but with other talent to plant stories and grow things that could eventually become another show in and of itself. Now here is where it gets kind of weird, Pasty, because this came from a Turner official, but old crazy Uncle Dave Meltzer states a different opinion, saying in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, the new show will not replace AEW Dark. He says, quote, when the new show launches, launches, the Wednesday tapings would expand and also include matches taped for the streaming show Dark, which would not be going away. This means there will be about four hours a week for the product being taped. While TNT is likely the home for this new show, if Dave Meltzer is correct, it's not guaranteed and it could end up on another Warner Media station. Man, if it wound up on CW, that could be so big for AEW as a whole. Now, CW I'll... is a shitty channel, and I won't watch it under any circumstance, but that's basic TV that's accessible to everyone. Right. That's true. Now, also of note, the new show is unable to run on either Sundays or Mondays, so it couldn't go up against Raw or pay-per-views that's due funny. to the agreements in place between the Khan family and the NFL. Because, as the owners of the Jacksonville Jaguars, they are prohibited from airing programming on a day and time that coincides with the NFL football. That's totally fine. I don't... Why would Dark want to take on Raw in the first place? That's what I don't understand. Like, why is this keep coming up in every paragraph of this? Well, thing? it's just because that's... I mean, it, it got brought up with TNA. It's get brought up with everybody Right now, and honestly, if you wanted to go head to head against WWE, you're going head to head on Friday. Right yeah, exactly. Now. SmackDown is the easier target at the moment. But um, but I think Dark Tuesdays is already a perfect spot for it. It gets you warmed up and ready for the for the show the following day, and I enjoy that. I just hope that if it is Dark and it does go to TV, they still bring it to YouTube because I think that was huge for AEW, and and a lot of people watch it. That's that's what I was saying. I was talking to a, a um, co-worker today, and I was like, if you want to keep watching uh, Dark, you better catch up on it now because it's going to TNT pretty soon. And it's like, so so I don't know. I don't know. You know, Dave Meltzer is pretty good, especially at big stuff like this where, like, companies uh-huh. are involved. He usually seems to know what he's talking about. But... The the confirmation of Dark being moved to TNT came from Riley, who is a TNT official. Yeah. So it's like... <sighs> I'm putting all my eggs in the basket of Dark is going to TV. It's already a brand. It's our, It would just be so much easier to translate it. Yeah, but you'd almost have to completely rebrand it, wouldn't you? Because you don't want your Dark matches on a TV show. I don't know. I like it. I mean... Dark. Well, I like, I like it. I'm just saying. It's called AEW Dark. Like, that, it lets you know what you're watching, whereas, like, WWE main event, like, that ain't no fucking main event. I get that, but would you, would you, if you were flipping through channels, as if you, let's say you had cable or satellite and you were flipping through the channels, would you want to stop on AEW Dark matches that happened before and after the real show? Or is that something you'd more want to tune into YouTube to watch? You know what I mean? Like yeah, I, I, I can see people watch not dark matches on YouTube, but as as a casual, you're not gonna know what they mean by dark. You know, it's like well, a casual is gonna watch it, like because a casual doesn't know any of those wrestlers. If it's not yeah. John Cena or them, I mean, nobody casual I think is gonna watch. I I don't I don't know. I guess it's this is really 
they're 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 dropping a lot of uh, a lot of things.